Imagine if we had no audience here today. Imagine if Kareem's beautiful orchestra that we just heard played to no one. Imagine if Kavim sang to no one, if Nasir Shamma played to no one. Well, that, that is the situation that artists face in Iraq today. I'm going to tell you the story of the young Mesopotamians, and it starts at the College of Art Baghdad. I went in search of an amazing piece of art. I went, okay, I went shopping. <laughs> and I came upon a quite risque, pretty risque exhibition. And I asked the teachers at the College of Art, is this allowed? And they said, of course it's allowed. We have freedom of expression. Of course we have freedom of expression. We have no audience. And every artist needs an audience. And yet 3,000 students study art at the College of Art Baghdad today. 3,000 students, which was eye-opening to me. Because if you, if you know that you have no audience, and if you know that you're pretty much guaranteed no employment, why would you study art? Why art? When I was 15, I studied art. I applied to art school, and I loved to paint. Painting gave me joy. It gave me joy, it lifted my spirits. It gave me a feeling of euphoria, creating something new, innovating, to a receptive audience. And when I won the art prize, I applied to art school. But a small part of me was unsure. I wanted to make the world a better place. I was 15 years old, and I had this life-changing decision to make, which way do I go? Um, but I, I was unsure if art was the way to do it. The 15-year-old me was unconvinced of the power of art. And so the 15-year-old me consulted my father. And my father, who is a scientist, drew lots of charts and diagrams, all of which pointed to mathematics. My father, who loves mathematics and hates lawyers. So what did I do? I became a lawyer. I rebelled, I rebelled. I studied hard, rebelliously hard. And um, I went to Oxford, I worked hard. I trained at the largest law, law firms in the world. I still kept a hand in art, and I helped with the development of Middle Eastern artists in my spare time with various charities. But the focus, my drive and my focus was on nation building. That was my role, that was my dream. And when the United Nations accepted my plan for the mediation, of the general public in the drafting of the Constitution of Iraq, the permanent Constitution of Iraq in 2005, I thought, this is my moment. This is my chance to make the world a better place. And so bright-eyed, I managed this program with the Constitutional Support Unit. And the idea was that we mediate and we involve the public. Well, in a sense, we delivered our aim. And we, we delivered a constitution. But the end result for me, the personal result for me, was a realization that, that top-down nation building was hard. It was hard and it was difficult. I looked outside the window and I saw a broken country. In fact, to be honest, I didn't even have to look outside the window. I was staying here in the Rashid Hotel and it looked very different back then. I turned the taps on in my room one night, no water came out. I turned them this way and that way, and then before I went to bed, I was sure I'd, I'd switch them off, or so I thought. And I woke up the next day, and I had this beautiful dream. I was by a stream, and it was green, and, and there was water. I could hear water rushing like a waterfall, and I opened one eye, and my shoes floated past me. And I had flooded that room. The water had returned in the middle of the night. I flooded the room. So I look outside the window. I look inside my room. And I see a destroyed country. I see a country that is falling apart. And people keep saying, Iraq 
is gone. Iraq is going. The Iraq that we knew is gone. Um, a New York-based Iraqi artist, Wafat Bilal, spoke very poignantly of this point. He surgically embedded, because he's very cutting edge, because he's a pioneer and he's Iraqi, he embedded surgically a camera into the back of his head. Now, this might sound a bit strange, but it was, it was a very powerful piece. He recorded everything, everything around him, from the mundane, every detail, and it spoke to this fear of loss this fear that you may not see your country again, the fear that your country has gone, it's, it's, Iraq is gone. So I went home and I thought, I rethought my, my nation building plans. The issue was for me, how can, you, how can you rebuild a nation if the foundations are broken? How can you top down build these laws and, and so on, if the very foundations are broken. And the question was, where, where is the Iraqi soul? On what basis do we have a foundation? On what basis do we call ourselves Iraqi? What is it that makes us call each other Iraqi brothers and Iraqi sisters? Where's the soul of Iraq? Well, it's our culture. It's our culture. We've heard some about this today. It is the culture is the bedrock of Iraq. And you speak to any Iraqi today, you talk of culture and you talk of our heritage and you'll see a smile on his face or her face. You'll see eyes light up. You speak about other topics, you may get a different reaction, but if you speak about culture, you're, you're on a winner, which is why I chose to speak about culture today. But the point is, 98% of the world's countries are built and founded on culture. But, and it's a big but, arts, arts inspires and translates that foundation into a country. It provides vision, innovation, it's forward thinking, and it, it builds a country in two ways. One, through communication, and two, unification. And I'm going to go through these points. Visual art is the ultimate form of communication. It transcends boundaries and language and nationality. And uh, there's a, an amazing conversation happening in the global contemporary art scene with innovation and creativity and people discussing and pushing the boundaries from the big questions to the trivial, from Weiwei to Tracy Emin to Basquet, but Iraq is not part of this conversation. Now, Iraq and the artists of Iraq, they too explore their issues of today, their hopes, their dreams, their fears, but unseen and unheard in a vacuum. And the danger is that the global art world and the, the latest tools of communication are moving so fast that Iraq is in danger of being left behind. And it's, it's a very dangerous point. But with the tools of expression, the latest tools of expression, Iraq can become part of this conversation. Art gives the unheard a voice. And it also opens you to empathy. I'm going to show you a video for 30 seconds. video is a video art piece by a young Iraqi artist that goes on for nine minutes. And I saw this video at the Metaf of Qatar. And at this museum, I noticed an entranced couple from Japan who spent three hours, three hours in front of this nine minute piece. And when they finally met the artist, the irony was they couldn't communicate. They spoke Japanese and he spoke Arabic and English. But they, they communicated and there was a meeting point through art. So art can open up these doors of communication. News, on the other hand, has been entranced with Iraq for the last 20 years. And uh, 
I mean, it's for all the wrong reasons. We become a statistic, we become dehumanized. But when you walk into a gallery, you give a piece of art space and attention. And those, the Japanese captivated couple connected in a way that I, don't, I doubt a headline could achieve. But it's not just the stars of the art world who, who stand to benefit from art. The tools of communication are so powerful. I mean, everybody here has had a moment where you've wanted to express yourself a particular way, but you haven't found the words, the pen strokes, the brush strokes. And what a relief it is when you're finally able to get your point across. And those tools of communication should be open to all. But the thing that I, I discovered was the most powerful and amazing side of art was unification. Culture unifies. Culture unifies in a way that very little else does. So many Iraqi artists today, in fact, I, I would bet that pretty much every Iraqi artist today has been inspired by our heritage. Whether it's, whether it's Babylon, Ishtar, whether it's the Tower of Babel or Sumerian love poetry, this harking back to our past is inspirational and beautiful. And just for a moment, perhaps we can forget the painful divisions of today and remember what binds us and what unites us and what inspires us. We can go two ways. And artists, perhaps, artists being visionaries, can explore that. We can tread this tightrope, this dangerous tightrope, with slippery slopes either side. Division, 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 division. So you're left with this. Or we can look to a positive future. We can, we can carve our own path as Iraqis. We can carve a path that others haven't, because that's what we do. That's what Iraqis do. We don't follow what the others have done, but we pioneer. And we can pioneer this new vision with the help of our creatives, with our visionaries, with our artists. And so I discovered that not only do the artists need our help, but we need the artists. And so back to the College of Art. I had turned up shopping on a shopping trip, and I, I, I realized that although I had arrived looking to buy a piece of art, Iraqi art now owned me. I met the visionaries I was looking for in, in those walls of the College of Art, people with real love and appreciation for Iraq, people with real, real vision. And um, I set about trying to help them. So in, completely in response to their, uh, their requests, I basically I carried out a survey. And they, they told me that um, again and again, they weren't looking for funding or any, any sort of excess. They, they were looking for the latest tools, and they, and they kept talking again and again and again about isolation, isolation, isolation. And so we formed this movement to end the isolation, and our strategy was to A, bring the latest tools, and B, connect with the outside world. We do not promote exodus, but we will bring the international art community to Iraq to invest in Iraq and connect human to human. And the interesting thing is, when I spoke to these teachers who are supporting us from NYU, Princeton, and so on, all completely for free, they, they didn't mention at any point, is it dangerous in Iraq? But they spoke of it being a real honor to give to a country that has given the world so much. Madiha Omar in 1944 revolutionized the Middle Eastern contemporary art scene. She fused Islamic calligraphy in a free-flowing form within the confines and the context of Middle Eastern art. And she is now, her influence is so prevalent now that she's almost become a cliche. Shakar Hassan traveled Europe and he brought back a whole movement that he was part of. When he embraced Sufism, he moved away from the human form to embrace abstract impressionism. And whilst over in, in the UK, Henry Moore, who's probably the most influential, well-known sculptor of this day, Henry Moore was influenced by what he called, rather rudely, primitive art. But um, he was a real proponent of Mesopotamian art and the beautiful simplicity and the proportions of Mesopotamian art. And he influenced a generation. 
And he influenced a generation that may even have included the descendants of Sumer, the descendants of Mesopotamia, Juad Salim and Ismail Fatah. But it's not only Iraq that has gone through these dark times. Picture a city with power cuts, power cuts, anarchy, looting. Well, this is not Iraq in 2011. This is New York, less than 40 years ago. New York went through a dark, well, Brooklyn, New York, went through a very dark period. But out of this dark period came, came beautiful, like new forms of hip hop, street art, break dance that are huge today. And the Renaissance, again, following the plague, third of Europe wiped out and they produced this beautiful art. So I guess my message today is that Iraq is not gone. Iraq is not gone. They can drown our libraries and turn our Tigris blue. They can loot our museums. They can flatten our Babylons. But Mesopotamia is alive in every one of you. You all embody 10,000 years of civilization. And we are all, we are all young Mesopotamians. Let the cultural ambassadors, our artists, hold the flame and represent us on a world stage. Let's invest in our artists so that they can be heard. Imagine, imagine if Iraqi art had an audience today. Thank you.